quiet now, late in the afternoon. The kind of spring day for kicking off your loafers and taking a long walk in the grass. And just thinking. Sometimes I try to put it all together. I try to remember the ideas I used to have about college. <laughs> Pretty fuzzy, I guess. Why I came to Sweetbriar? There must have been a hundred reasons, and twice that many ideas of what it would be like. But none of them would begin to describe the experience of being here. Well, of course, I had read the catalog. I knew that Sweetbriar is a residential college for women, 12 miles north of Lynchburg, Virginia. I knew that the college had around 700 students who came from most of the 50 states and many other countries. That it offered courses in more than 23 different fields of study. Let's see, I knew the campus has 3,000 acres and used to be a plantation. But what I couldn't imagine was the atmosphere of Sweetbriar. Not only the campus and its surroundings, but the people. Students and teachers I'd be meeting and living with. They have helped me understand what education really involves. For one thing, it's more exciting and complex than I thought. The education which we offer at Sweetbriar is the liberal arts education, emphasizing the arts and humanities, the natural sciences, philosophy, history, religion, and the social sciences, such as government and economics. It is deliberately unspecialized, both because the explosion of knowledge tends to outdate a specialized education very quickly, and because the age group with which we are dealing is rightly not yet ready for specialization. Our students are just beginning to discover their capacities and their interests, and our purpose is to give them freedom to explore both of these. And we want to give them the opportunity to free their minds from prejudices and ignorance and selfish interests and become their true selves. And the process of becoming a free person is really no more than becoming a responsible person in the fullest sense, something you can't learn in four years of note-taking no matter how conscientious. To me, it means being exposed to a myriad of ideas. It means questions and searching for purpose and values <laughs> and changing my mind 50 times a year. It means arguing and discussing with other girls or professors, learning to respect the views of others, becoming more aware. Becoming is what education is all about, I think, and what you become depends on how well you search. It doesn't really matter where. Sometimes you search in a book, sometimes in the chapel, or just over coffee with your roommate, or walking through the woods. The whole experience is impossible to describe. But I think one way is to realize that Sweetbriar is an attempt to take the best from many worlds and place it in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. I think that's true. Some people feel apprehensive about not being in a city. They're afraid of being isolated and apart. But I think many people in cities are the isolated ones. Of course, cities do have advantages, but they don't include the eerie hooting of a screech owl at dusk or miles of woods and hills to wander in. And it leads to some unexpected benefits. Several areas within the campus have been set aside as nature centers, which have led many of us to take courses in ecology or field biology. And we end up doing independent projects with picnics in the grass instead of seminars around a table. In this way, the whole campus is a great study in natural sciences. Perhaps because there are fewer distractions, a girl has a real opportunity to get caught up in and tremendously excited about something she is studying. Being able to spend hours in the library stacks, looking for books or periodicals I want for a term paper, and finding myself sitting in the aisle and poring over some totally irrelevant but fascinating topic. Just being able to browse at random and then to shut myself into a study cubicle to work on my paper are privileges which I have learned to appreciate. I guess what I'm saying is that at Sweetbriar, when you want solitude, you can find it. And that's pretty important. And you can become involved in the world beyond the campus. Girls go out and assist as poll watchers during elections, or volunteer as tutors in Operation Head Start. We can be as with it as we want to be. For instance, we can invite anyone to our student symposiums. One year, Edward Albee and John Updike, Jonas Mikas and Charlie Bird were on campus, exciting, delighting, and provoking all of us into heated discussions. Later, we had time for reflections, a chance to let it all soak in 
put things into perspective. But it's not only a matter of bringing the outside world to Sweetbriar. The college is very much a part of that world. Many of us work regularly as volunteers in the Winchburg Training School and Hospital. After a while, some of us become friends with and are able to help the physically handicapped and mentally retarded patients. Some of us practice teach in local public schools. I'm teaching in the Amherst School, two classes a day, ten hours a week. It takes a lot of time and study trying to be prepared for each class. I'm really using our Kellogg Education Library and its collection of children's books. They've been a big help in my teaching. Washington is close, so we have access to government agencies and personnel. A junior who is majoring in government can get a special insight into how our government works by enrolling in the Washington semester at American University. And there's the famous Sweetbriar Junior Year in France, one of the best college programs of its kind. A number of our juniors enroll every year. Two other juniors go to St. Andrews University in Scotland, and others may go to any one of a number of countries, Britain, Italy, Spain, Germany, Sweden, Greece, or Japan. I was away last year studying in Stockholm, and something happened over there that made me really interested in learning. Not just reading books, but really wanting to learn. Not so much so I could learn what other people have done, but so I could do something myself. And at Sweetbriar, contrasts seem to work and to blend. An atmosphere of reflection in a beautiful, grassy setting when you're in that kind of mood. An atmosphere of excitement and participation in social life when you're in that kind of mood. With so many colleges in the area, there was always something going on. Football weekends, parties and dances, concerts by Van Cliven or the London Symphony Orchestra at the University of Virginia, special lectures by men and women we read about in the news, political rallies, like the famous mock convention at Washington and Lee. It's sometimes hard to choose. New York is the favorite place to go for a weekend fling. The theater, museums, a taste of city glamour. All of us love it. And girls from far places get a special kick out of going to New York. As for winter sports, on weekends, the college crowd takes to the ski slopes and the skating rink at Hot Springs, only two hours from here by bus. College life, of course, means classes. At Sweetbriar, small classes are a big advantage. Most average between 20 and 30. A few lecture courses have smaller discussion sections. Senior seminars usually have 10 or less. Students get to know their teachers and vice versa. Our professors care about what we do and are able to give us individual attention. Professors here aren't bound by a vast bureaucracy. We enjoy a great deal of flexibility. We can change our courses to reflect new advances in the field of our knowledge and the special interests of the students we're teaching. We can elect courses like Introduction to Computer Sciences, Anthropology, Numerical Analysis, Counterpoint or Asian Civilizations, or the Writer's Workshop. You choose courses from many different fields in your first two years, and then narrow your choice to one for concentration during the last two years. Even then, you are encouraged to add new dimensions by electing courses in related or unrelated fields. It's hard to decide what courses to choose, from ancient history to modern politics, from the origins of man to biochemistry or nuclear physics, French literature, Shakespeare, modern poetry, theater production, abnormal psychology, monetary theory, art in Latin America, topology, so many choices. Of course, your faculty advisor helps you decide. One of the greatest benefits is the close student-teacher relationship, uh, which seems to be disappearing from higher education. In many places, professors are too busy to teach. They forget about the student. But here, I feel uh, there is a dialogue going on, and that's extremely valuable. Some of us who have taught at sprawling universities feel that this is very significant. Yes, this is good. There's something about working on a project with a teacher you've come to know pretty well, who is going to give it a lot of close attention. For example, if you go to the science building at night to work in a lab, you always find professors whose office doors are open 
and who will interrupt their own work to help you, or to tell you about research or writing they are doing, or what they are reading in order to keep abreast of changes in their field of study. I think what it comes down to is that Sweetbriar is a close-knit community of students and teachers, teachers whose primary interest is teaching. One aspect of this community which I think the students come to value is that a high percentage of the faculty lives on campus. This helps create a type of community which is becoming rare. The sense of community comes alive in all sorts of ways. Sometimes we'll join the children of faculty members and often get beaten. Here too, we have a chance to do some of the tasks that are needed in any working community. Many of us have jobs on campus, in offices, laboratories, the library, as waitresses in the dining rooms. Assisting in the language laboratories offers special opportunities for advanced students, often those who plan to teach. These are ways of gaining experience and being a part of what makes the college operate. Self-help work on campus is one form of financial aid, in addition to scholarships and loans. About one student in seven receives such assistance. A great many of us also find summer work. Sometimes this leads right into a job after college, <laughs> or it may be one way of finding out what you are not suited for. Here you get the feeling of being part of a busy community that's very much alive. While it's a place where people know and care about each other, we're not pampered. By this, I mean that the college tries to leave as many doors open as possible for self-expression and individual effort. Because religion is a personal concern, we are free to attend services in the Memorial Chapel on campus, or to join Protestant, Catholic, or Jewish congregations off campus. Although Sweetbriar is non-denominational, the services in the chapel follow those of the Episcopal Church and are usually conducted by our college chaplain. In the smaller chapel, Roman Catholic Mass is celebrated every Sunday. Visiting ministers or speakers add scope to such religious activities on campus as the annual religious conference planned and arranged by students in the YWCA. Basically, we're encouraged to feel responsible for doing things on our own. For instance, we make many of our own rules by a system of self-government that really works. We have an honor system to guide us, and I think one reason it's effective is that we know there aren't any proctors staring over our shoulders. Just our own consciences and our own sense of self-discipline. We live in an atmosphere of mutual respect. I think the honor system has a lot to do with that because ultimately everything comes back to the honor system. You have to discipline yourself, not just to your studies, but in everything because everyone relies on you. When someone assumes you will be responsible, you usually will be. When the Student Curriculum Committee proposed to the faculty that we be allowed to schedule our own exams, the faculty approved, and after our first experience, everyone agreed it was a success. Self-scheduling works for two reasons. First, because we have a strong honor system. Our students can be trusted to take their examinations and write them and bring them back without cheating. But secondly, it works because in the free environment at Sweetbriar, people develop a strong sense of responsibility. They are willing to handle the details of self-scheduling. If they were not willing, the system would collapse under its own weight. There are dozens of other ways where we have the freedom to pursue our own interests. For example, in sports where there are so many choices, hockey, basketball, lacrosse, and volleyball as team sports, riding, tennis, golf, badminton, squash rackets, boating, and canoeing, on your own or with others, any of these, or dance, may be elected to meet the physical education requirement or chosen for pleasure. The lake is open for swimming in late spring and early fall, and sometimes for ice skating in winter. In a woman's college, where girls hold all the offices, there's plenty of opportunity to develop as leaders and as intelligent followers. In small groups, everyone's opinion is heard and counts. You may become an active member of one of the political organizations. The World Affairs Club represents Sweetbriar at conferences on international relations at the Naval Academy or the University of North Carolina, or participate in those held here at Sweetbriar. Singing with the Sweetbriar Choir in chapel and in concert, or singing for fun with the 13th floor or the jug band. 
writing for the college newspaper, editing copy or taking pictures, or selling ads, contributing drawings, poems, or stories to the literary magazine, The Brambler, writing a play which might be produced in student experimental theater, acting and directing or working backstage for paint and patches presentations, dancing in class or in concert, taking history of art as a basis for a lifetime of appreciation of what you see or expressing yourself in your own painting or sculpture, taking lessons in voice, organ, piano, and giving your own recital if you are majoring in music. A few students are sufficiently advanced to give a recital even though they have chosen another major. This is Babcock Fine Arts Center, where action is the word. Whether the program in the auditorium features a speaker, like Madame Gandhi or Lauren Isley, or a concert by the Italian Quartet, the Greg Smith Singers, or the Canadian Players presenting King Lear, or whether you just come in to look at the changing exhibits to see what's new. Here, the arts may be a living experience. Perhaps for you, self-expression would mean an independent study project, such as research in one of the sciences, or composing a motet, or reading for honors. You might decide to enroll in the honors program, starting the second semester of your junior year. This means going deeper into your major, with independent research for a senior honors thesis, which will be evaluated by two professors and a faculty member from another college. They also administer an oral examination on the thesis. Success in meeting these requirements leads to a degree with honors. Speaking of honors, at the end of their first semester in college, outstanding students are named on the freshman honor list. Upperclassmen may qualify for the dean's list, published twice a year, or junior honors at the beginning of the third year. Election to Phi Beta Kappa is considered the highest academic distinction open to seniors and sometimes juniors. As a matter of fact, any of the extra pursuits you follow for pleasure might lead you in a number of directions you hadn't even considered before college. Sweetbriar wants to interest you in many things, so you actually want to test new ideas and try out your abilities. Sweetbriar operates on a small scale, but this small scale encourages us to think big and plan big. Hopefully this summer I plan to start a job with Time Life in New York working for the film department and take night courses at Columbia University in film. And I'm also interested in going perhaps to the New School of Social Research, which I will do if I find that I'm not as interested in film as I thought I would be after working for them this summer. When I graduate in June, I plan on taking a computer programming course with IBM in Gaithersburg, Maryland. After I finish, I'll be assigned to either Washington, D.C. or Cape Kennedy, Florida. I'll be working either in the physics field, working with the laser beam, or in the medicine field, or with local and state governments doing highway planning. I hope to become a pediatrician. After four years of medical school, I will be an intern for one year, then maybe one or two years of residency, then two or three years of practice, something I've always wanted to do since I was about seven or eight years old. And um, I worked in a hospital the summer after my freshman year, and this encouraged me even more to want to become a doctor. When I graduate in June, I'll go to Africa, to Sierra Leone, where I'll teach English in primary school for the Peace Corps. And I'll have a period of three months training in Sierra Leone, probably in Freetown. And after that, I really don't know. <laughs> All of these young women about to graduate are answering that question. If you go to a women's liberal arts college, what will you be prepared to do? The answer, of course, is anything you want to do. Because literally, the doors are open on the world. It has been a quiet time on the one hand, with time to think and to grow, and also a very exciting, vital time with so many new opportunities and ideas. I guess the only thing I hadn't realized before I came to Sweetbriar is that college is just the beginning and that what I take with me from Sweetbriar will relate to my whole life. That whatever I'm doing, something I thought or heard or studied in college may influence my ability and enjoyment, my contribution as an intelligent, interested, useful citizen of the world.